welcome to educator.com. So far in conic sections, we've discussed parabolas and circles. The next type of conic section we're going to cover is the ellipse. First of all, what is an ellipse? Well, an ellipse is formally defined as the set of points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points is constant. Well, what does that mean? First of all, this is the general shape of an ellipse, and these two points here are the foci of the ellipse. So we'll call them F1 and F2. And looking back at this definition, it's a set of points in the plane, and if you pick any of these points, say right here, and measure the distance from this point to one foci, we'll call that D1. And then we measure the distance from that same point to the other, to F2, to the other focus, we'll call that distance D2. This definition states that if I add up these two distances, D1 plus D2, they will equal a constant. I could pick any point. I could then pick this point and say, okay, um, here's another distance. calling that, say, D3, and this one D4. And if I added up this distance and this distance, D3 plus D4, I would get that same constant. And I could do that with any point on the ellipse. Continuing on with some properties of the ellipse. An ellipse actually has two axes of symmetry. One is called the major axis and the other is the minor axis. And these intersect at the center of the ellipse. Here we're gonna look at an ellipse that's centered at the origin. So it is the center at zero, zero. And again, I have foci F1 and F2. This is one of the vertices of the ellipse. So here's a vertex. This is the second vertex of the ellipse, and the major axis runs from one vertex to the other vertex, and you can see that it passes through both of the foci. So this is the major axis. And what we're looking at here is an ellipse that has a horizontal major axis. In a few minutes, we'll look at ellipses that are oriented the other way, ellipses that are oriented with a vertical major axis. So that does exist, but right now we'll just focus on this for the general discussion. So here we have the major axis and intersecting at the center is a second axis called the minor axis. Looking more closely at the relationships between the major axis, the minor axis, the foci, and the distances relating them, Let's call the distance from one vertex to the center A. So this distance is A. Therefore, the length of the major axis is 2A. And this is going to become important later on when we're working with writing equations for ellipses or taking an equation and then trying to graph the ellipse. So that's my first distance. It's this entire this is actually called the semi-major axis. The length of the semi-major axis is A. The length of the major axis is 2A. Now looking at the minor axis. From this point to the center, this, this length is B. Therefore, the length of the minor axis is equal to 2B. Now looking at the foci, the distance from one focus to the center is going to be C. Therefore, the distance from one focus to another, or the distance between the foci, is equal to 2C. There is also an equation relating these A, B, and C, and that is A squared equals b squared plus c squared. So keep this equation in mind. Again, it becomes important because you might be given a and b but not c, or you may be given a drawing, a sketch of the 
ellipse and then ask to write an equation based on it. And sometimes you need to find this third component in order to write that equation. And you can do that by knowing that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Again, a is the length of the semi-major axis. B is the distance from here to the center on the minor axis. So 2B is the length of the minor axis. And C is the distance between one focus and the center. 2C gives the distance between the two foci. So those are important relationships to understand when working with the ellipse. Standard form. Looking at what the standard form of the equation of an ellipse with the center at 0, 0 and a horizontal major axis is, it is x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. So this is the standard form. And again, we already discussed what a, a is and b is. And if you figure out those from the graph and are given those, then you can go ahead and write your equation. Or given the equation, you can graph the ellipse. So let's take a look at an example. a squared divided by 9 plus y squared divided by 4 equals 1. So again, this is just the equation for an ellipse with a horizontal major axis. So it's sketched out here that way. We can make this more precise by saying, OK, a squared equals 9. Therefore, a, the square root of 9, a equals the square root of 9, or 3. That means that the distance from here to here is going to be 3. And since this is centered at the origin, this will actually be at the point 3, 0. So let's write that as a set of points, 0, 3, as a coordinate pair. OK, uh, that means that this length of a is 3. Over here, the other vertex is going to be at 0, negative 3. So I have one vertex at 0, 3, and the other at 0, negative 3. And I have f1 here and f2 here. And the length of the major axis is actually 6. It's going to be equal to 2a. 2a equals 6, and that is the length of the major axis. b squared equals 4. Since b squared equals 4, b equals the square root of 4, which equals 2. Therefore, actually, this needs to be written the other way. This is actually 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. Now, up here, we have 0, 2. and 0, negative 2. And 2, then, is the length. That's b. That is the length of, the, of half of the minor axis. 2b equals 4. And this is the length of the minor axis. So you get a lot of information just by looking at the equation of the ellipse in standard form. If I needed to, I could figure out the distance between the foci, and I could figure out what c is. And remember, c is this length. Because recall that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. And I know that a squared is 9. I know that b squared is 4. So I'm looking for c squared. 9 minus 4 gives me 5. So c squared equals 5. Therefore, c equals the square root of 5. And that's approximately equal to 2.2. So this distance here is roughly 2.2. And the length, or the distance between these foci would be about 4.4. So just by having this equation, I could graph the ellipse, and I could find this third component that was missing. OK, so that was standard form for an ellipse that has a horizontal major axis. For an ellipse that has a vertical major axis, you're going to see that the a squared is associated with the y squared term. In the horizontal major axis, we had x squared divided by a squared. Now, if you were given an equation, how would you know what you're dealing with if you're dealing with a vertical major axis or horizontal major axis? Well, a squared is the larger number. So let's say I was given something like y squared divided by 16 plus 
x squared divided by 9 equals 1. When I look at this, I see that the larger number is associated with y squared, so that tells me that I have a vertical major axis. If it had been x squared associated with 16, then I would have said, okay, that's a horizontal major axis. Again, I can graph this ellipse by having this equation written in standard form. I know that a squared equals 16, therefore a equals the square root of 16, it equals 4. This time, I'm going to go along here for the major axis, and that makes sense because I have a foci focus here and another focus here, and the major axis passes through the two foci. Okay, so 0, 4 is going to give me one vertex. 0, negative 4 will give me the other vertex. And remember that 2a equals 8, and that is going to be the length of the major axis. And again, right now we're limiting our discussion to ellipses with a center at 0, 0. Later on, we'll expand the discussion to talk about on the graphs of ellipses with centers and other areas of the coordinate plane. Okay, so now I have b squared equals 9. Therefore, the square root of 9 is going to equal b. This tells me that b equals 3. So since b equals 3, the length of half of the minor axis is going to be 3. So right here at 3, 0, it's going to be one point, and I'm going to have the other point right here at negative 3, 0. And the length of the minor axis, 2b equals 6, and that is the length of the minor axis. Again, I can use the relationship a squared equals b squared plus c squared to figure out what c is and to figure out where the foci are located. So I know that a squared is 16, I know that b squared is 9, and I'm trying to figure out c squared. So I take 16 minus 9, that gives me 7 equals c squared, therefore c equals the square root of 7. And the square root of 7 is approximately equal to 2.6, so this is going to be up here at about 0, 2.6. And F2 is going to be down here at about 0, negative 2.6. So again, using standard form, you can graph the ellipse, and you can find where the foci are based on the values of a squared and b squared. We talked a little bit about graphing ellipses, but sometimes you're not given the equation in standard form. If the equation is not in standard form, you have to put it that way. And working with other conic sections, we've learned that you can put an equation into standard form for a conic section by completing the square. You can also use symmetry, just as we did when graphing parabolas or circles. So let's say you're given an equation like this, 3x squared plus 4y squared minus 18x minus 16y equals negative 19, and you're asked to graph it. You're going to put it in standard form, but it's nice, first of all, to know what kind of shape you're working with. And you can tell that just by looking at this, even though it's not in standard form yet. And the reason is, I see that I have an x squared term and a y squared term on the same side of the equation with the same sign but different coefficients. That tells me that I'm working with an ellipse. And we're going to go into more detail in the lecture on conic sections. We're going to review how to tell apart the equations for various conic sections. But just briefly now, recall that a parabola would have either an x squared term or a y squared term, not both. With a circle, the coefficients of x squared and y squared are the same. That's for a circle. For an ellipse, the coefficients of the x squared and y squared terms are different. Now, you see that these have the same sign. So with an ellipse, it's important to note that the x squared and y squared terms have the same sign. If they don't have the same sign, that's actually a different shape. So they have the same sign, but the, this coefficient is 3, the x squared. 
coefficient and the y squared coefficient is 4. So that tells me I have an ellipse, not a circle. My next step is to complete the square and write this in standard form so that if I wanted to graph it, I'd have all the information that I need. The first thing to do is to group the x variable terms and the y variable terms. So this gives me x squared minus 18x plus 4y squared minus 16y equals negative 19. Okay. Now, when I'm looking at this, I remember that to complete the square, I want to end up with a leading coefficient of 1. So I'm going to factor out this 3 to get 3x squared minus 6x, and I'm going to need to add something else over here to complete the square, a third term. Here, factor out the 4 to give me y squared minus 4y equals negative 19. Recall that to complete the square, you're going to have, you're going to add b squared plus 4 to each set of terms. So for this x, the x group, we have b squared divided by 4 equals negative 6 squared divided by 4 equals 36 divided by 4 equals 9. So I'm going to add a 9 here. Very important to the right side, I'm going to add 9 times 3. So 9 times 3, which is 27. Add to the right. Because if I don't, the equation won't be balanced anymore. Now, the y terms, the y variable terms. I need to add something here to complete the square. And I'll work over here for this. b squared divided by 4 equals negative 4 squared divided by 4 equals 16 divided by 4 equals 4. So I'm going to add 4 here, but to the right, what I need to add is 4 times 4, 4 times 4, so I need to add 16. Now that I have this, my next step is to write this in standard form. So 3, and this is x minus 3 quantity squared. So if I squared this, I would get this back, plus 4y minus 2 quantity squared equals, so negative 19 plus 16 gives me, let's see, negative 3, 27 minus 3, that gives me 24 on the right. Well, recall that standard form, I want a 1 over here on the right, I want this to equal 1, so this gives me I need to divide both sides by 24. Divide by 24. So this is going to give me 3x minus 3 quantity squared over 24 plus 4y minus 2 quantity squared divided by 24 equals 24 divided by 24. This finally leaves me with x minus 3 quantity squared this 3 will cancel, and I'm going to get 8 in the denominator. This 4 will cancel, and I'll get 6 in the denominator equals 1. Now, I have the bigger term associated with x. That tells me that I have a horizontal ma uh, major axis. So the major axis is horizontal, and let me go ahead and write that up here. x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. Okay, now you can see that this looks slightly different, and we have these extra terms here. And what that tells us is something we're going to discuss in a moment. And what we're going to discuss is situations where the center is not at 0, 0. So the center of the ellipse is not at 0, 0. But we have the same information that we would have with the center being at 0, 0, and that is that I have a squared, which equals 8. And I know I have a horizontal major axis. And I have b squared, 
equals 6. Okay. Looking now at equations for ellipse with centers at hk, so at, at somewhere other than 0. If you look at the situation where we have a horizontal major axis or versus a vertical major axis, you can again see that it's very similar to when the center is at 0, 0. The x is associated with the a squared term when the major axis is horizontal. The y is associated with the a squared term when the major axis is vertical. The only difference is we now have these terms telling us where the center is. And if the center is going to be 0, all that would happen is you would have x minus 0, y minus 0, which then gives you back the equation we worked with before. x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared, or y squared divided by a squared plus x squared divided by b squared, all equal to 1. All right, so let's talk about an example for this x minus 4 squared plus y plus 6 squared equals 1. This is all over 100, and this is all divided by 25. What this tells me is that the center is at hk. So this is h, that's 4. You need to be careful here because what you have is a positive. But the standard form is a negative, and it's perfectly fine to write this like this, but you need to keep in mind that this is really saying, if you think about it, y plus 6 is the same as y minus negative 6. So when I look at it this way, I realize that if it's in this form, k is actually going to be negative 6. And if you're not careful about that, you can end up putting your center in the wrong place. So Let's let this be 2, 4, 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. So the center is at 4, negative 6, right here. a squared equals 100. My larger term is my a squared term, and I have a horizontal major axis. Therefore, a equals the square root of 100, which is 10. So since a equals 10, I'm going to go, and the length of the major axis is horizontal, then I'm going to need to go actually 10 over from 4. It's going to be all the way out here at 14. So this is where one vertex would be. This is going to be at 4 plus 10, gives me 14 negative 6. That's one vertex. Negative 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So negative 14 is going to be about here. And I'm going to have the other vertex here at negative 14, negative 6. I have a minor axis. b squared equals 25, therefore b equals 5. So what that tells me is that I come here at negative 6, I add 5 to that, and that's going to bring me right here at negative 1. So it's going to be right about here. And then negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 6 plus 5 is going to be down here at negative 11. So this ellipse is going to roughly look like this. OK? And standard form allowed me to determine that the center is at 4 negative 6, that I have a vertex. If I add 10, that's going to give me this vertex right over here. Let's draw this more at the vertex. I have another vertex here. The major axis is going to pass through here. And then I'm going to have a minor axis passing through here. All right, in the first example, we're asked to find the equation of the ellipse that is shown. And I'm going to go ahead and label these, some of these points. This is going to be f1, and let's say we're given f1 as being at 0, 3. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3. Each mark is going to stand for 1. Down here, I have f2. That should actually be down here, a little bit lower. So that is f2 at 0, negative 3. Let's say we're also given a vertex at 0, 5, and the other vertex at 0, negative 5. 
All right, so I'm asked to find the equation of the ellipse shown, and the one thing I see is that there is a vertical major axis. Since there is a vertical major axis, it's going to be in the general form y minus k squared divided by a squared plus x minus h squared divided by b squared equals 1. Now, I notice that the center is at 0, 0. So that tells me that, that h and k are 0, 0. So this is actually going to become the simpler form, y divided by a squared plus x divided by b squared equals 1. The next piece of information I have is the length of a. So this line is going to give me a. And I know that since the center is here at 0, 0, the length of this is 5. Therefore, a equals 5. Since a equals 5, a squared is going to equal 5 squared, or 25. I don't know b. This is going to be b, but I don't know what it is. However, I do know c. If I look here, this is c. From negative 3 to the center is 3, so c equals 3. Therefore, c squared equals 3 squared, or 9. The other piece of information I have is the equation we've been working with that states that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Therefore, I can find b squared, which I need in order to write my equation. So I know that a squared is 25. I know that c squared is 9. And I'm looking for b squared. 25 minus 9 is 16. Therefore, b squared equals 16 and b equals 4. Now I can go ahead and write my equation. I have all the information I need. So let's put it all together right here. y divided by a squared. I know that a squared is 25. Plus, that's actually y squared right here. Let's not forget the squares. Plus x squared divided by b squared. b squared is 16 equals 1. So again, this had a center at 0, 0. So remember that this is the general form of the equation. When you have a center at 0, 0, it becomes this form. I had a vertical major axis, so I'm using this form where the a squared is associated with the y squared term. And by having a squared and c squared, I was able to determine what b squared is. Example 2. Let's Find the equation of the ellipse satisfying a major axis 10 units long and parallel to the y-axis. Minor axis 4 units long, center at 4, 2. Let's start with the center. The center is at 4, 2. Center's right here, 4, 2. And it says that the major axis is parallel to the y-axis. What that tells me is that I have a vertical major since this is a vertical major axis, and I know the center, I know hk, I'm going to be working with the general form y minus k squared divided by a squared plus x minus h squared divided by b squared equals 1. I have h, I have k. I need to find a squared and b squared. The other piece of information I have is that the major axis is 10 units long, and I know that it's vertical. So since it's 10 units long, that means that the major axis length is equal to 2a. And I know that that length is 10. Therefore, I just take 10 divided by 2, and I get that a equals 5. So I'm starting here, and if I take 5 plus 4, I'm going to get that this is going to be, or excuse me, 5 plus 2 that I'm going to have a, or the vertex, the vertex up here at 7. So 4 plus 2, that's going to give me 7, so right there. So I go 5 plus 2 equals 7. So that's going to give me 4 comma 7 is where this is going to be. 
and I got that by keeping the X where it was and then adding two where the center was, adding five to that, which is the length of A. Then I'm going to go down. Again, it's going to be at four. But then if I take two and subtract five from it, I'm going to get negative three. So right here at four, negative three is the other vertex. Now, I was not asked to graph this, but I'm graphing it so that I have an understanding of what each of these mean so that I can go ahead and write the equation. Okay, so what I have now is I know what A is, which means I can figure out A squared, and I know the center. The last thing I know is that the minor axis length equals 2B. I'm given that that is four units long, therefore b equals two. So if I started here at four and I added two to that, I'm going to end up with six two, and I'm going to end up with, if I start at four, I subtract two, I'm going to end up with two two. And this is b. This is A. Okay, so I have a minor axis that is a length of 2B, which tells me that B equals 2. From this information, I can go ahead and write this equation. I know A equals 5, so A squared equals 5 squared, which is 25. B equals 2, B squared, therefore equals 2 squared, or 4. So I have everything I need to write this. Y minus k, well k is 2, it's quantity squared, divided by a squared, a squared is 25, plus x minus h, h is 4, divided by quantity squared, divided by b squared, which is 4, equals 1. So this standard form describes the ellipse with the major and minor axis here, and you could finish that out by just connecting these points and drawing the ellipse if you wanted to finish graphing it. Find the equation of the ellipse satisfying endpoints of the major axis at 11, 3 and negative 7, 3 and foci at 7, 3 and negative 3, 3. All right, endpoints of the major axis. So let's do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Negative 2, 4, negative six. Okay. So endpoints at 11, three. So 11's right here, and then we'll have three be right here. The other endpoint is at negative seven, which is going to be here, three. And that tells me the major axis. Since the major axis is horizontal, we're going to be working with the general form x minus h quantity squared divided by a squared plus y minus k quantity squared divided by b squared equals 1. So that's my first piece of information. I can also figure out the length of the major axis. So since the major axis goes from negative 7, it goes from negative 7 to 11. So if I take negative 7 minus 11, I'm going to get negative 18. And a length is going to be an absolute value, so I'm just going to take 18. The length is going to be the absolute value of this difference. All right, I know that the major axis length is 18. The other thing I know is that the major axis length equals 2a, as we've discussed. So 2a equals 18. Therefore, a equals 9. So I know that the distance from the center to this endpoint is 9. Therefore, I could just say, OK, 9 minus 11 gives me 2. And I know that it's going to be up here. At the, the y coordinate will be 3. So that's 2, 3. 
Another way to solve this without using all this graphing would have simply been to find the midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well because the midpoint of the major axis is the center of the ellipse. So let's try that as well. Center using the midpoint formula. So recall the midpoint formula, we're going to take x1 plus x2, so that's 11 plus negative 7, and we're going to take the average of that, so we'll divide it by 2. That's going to give me the x-coordinate. For the y-coordinate, I'm going to take 3 plus 3, and I'm going to divide that by 2. And this will give you center at 11 minus 7 is is, gives you 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 3 plus 3 is 6 divided by 2 gives you 3, and that's exactly what I came up with using the graphing method. So just to show you, you could have figured this out algebraically, where the center is, or you could have figured it out using graphing. So this gives me HK. So I have HK, and I have A is 9, so I can get A squared. The next thing I need to do is figure out B, and they don't give me B, but what they do give me are the foci. There are foci at 7, 3, so 7 is here, so foci at 7, 3, we'll call this one F1, and that's 7, 3, and this is the center right here. There's another foci at 3, negative 3, 3. So F2 is going to be at negative 3, 3. Recall that the distance between, from one foci to the other is 2C. The distance from one foci to the center is C. So let's just work with this. This is C. So 7 minus 2 is 5, therefore C equals 5. So I have a equals 9. I have C equals 5. Again, that's the distance from the center to a focus. Or I could have figured out the distance from one focus to another. That's 2C and then divided by 2. So I have A and I have C. And I know that A squared equals E squared plus C squared. So this gives me 9 squared equals B squared plus 5 squared. 9 squared is 81 equals b squared plus 25. If I take 81 minus 25, I'm going to get 56 equals b squared. And I don't even need to take the square root of that because to put this into standard form, I actually need b squared. So I get x minus h. Remember, the center is hk, so that's 2. Quantity squared divided by a squared. Recall that a squared is 9 squared, so it's 81, plus y minus k squared. K is 3, quantity squared, divided by B squared. I determine that B squared is 56. All of this equal to 1. So just by knowing the endpoints of the major axis and the location of the foci, I could figure out A squared and B squared, as well as the center, and then write this equation for the ellipse in standard form. Finally, we're asked to graph an ellipse that is not given to us in standard form, so we have some extra work to do. We're going to actually have to complete the square in order to even graph this. So let's go ahead and start by grouping the x squared and y squared term, x terms together and y terms together. Also note that since this has an x squared term and a y squared term on the same side of the equation with the same sign, they're both positive. But different coefficients, I know I have an ellipse. It's not a circle because this, for a circle, these coefficients would be the same. All right, grouping uh, the terms together. This gives me 14x squared minus 56x plus 6y squared minus 24y equals negative 38. Looking at this, I see that I have a common factor of 2. If I divide both sides by 2, I can simplify this equation. So the numbers I'll work with will be smaller. So let's divide both sides by 2 to get 7x squared minus 28x plus 
3y squared minus 12y equals negative 19. Next thing to do is to factor out the leading coefficient since it is not 1. So I'm going to factor out a 7 to get x squared minus 4x plus over here I have a common, I'm going to factor out a 3 that gives me y squared minus 4y all equals negative 19. I need to complete the square. So I need to get b squared divided by 4. In this case, that's going to give me 4 squared divided by 4 equals 16 divided by 4 equals 4. So over here, I'm going to add a 4. Very important, on the right, I have negative 19. And I'm adding to the left 7 times 4. That's 28. So I need to add 28 to the right. All right, over here for the y terms, b squared over 4. Again, we have a b term that is 4, so I'm going to end up with the same thing, 4. Now, here I'm actually adding 4 times 3 is 12, so I need to add that to the right as well to keep the equation balanced. This is the easiest step to mess up on. You're focused here on completing the square, and then you sometimes don't remember that you have to add the same thing to both sides. Now, working on writing this in standard form, this is going to give me x minus 2 quantity squared plus 3 y minus 2 quantity squared equals negative 19 plus 12 is going to leave me with 28 OK, so negative 19 plus 12, that's going to be negative 7. 28 minus 7 equals 21. To get this into standard form, I need to have a 1 on the right. So I'm going to divide both sides by 21. This is going to give me 7x minus 2 quantity squared divided by 21 plus 3y minus 2 quantity squared divided by 3, divided by 21 equals 21 divided by 21. This cancels to x minus 2 quantity squared divided by 3. This becomes y minus 2 quantity squared divided by 7. And this just becomes 1. Now I have standard form. I can do some graphing. I have a center at Let's see. OK. At 2, 2. So center is at 2, 2. That's right here. So the center is at 2, 2. So that's h and k. And I notice, actually, that the larger term is under the y. It's associated with the y. That tells me that this has a vertical major axis. And therefore, I'm going to keep that in mind that it's going to be oriented this way, that the ellipse is going to end up like this instead of like this. OK, so I have my center at 2, 2. Therefore, a squared equals 7. a equals the square root of 7. The square root of 7 is about 2.6. So it gets messy, as always, when you're working with radicals. But it's about 2.6. So what I have to do is say, OK, my vert vertex up here is going to be at x equals 2. And then y is going to equal 2 plus 2.6, which is 4.6. So 2. 4.6. And again, I got that by saying, OK, the length of A, the length from the vertex to the center, is 2.6. So 2 plus 2.6 gives me 4.6. Over here, I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to subtract 2.6 from it. So x is still going to be 2. Now y is going to be about here, which is 2, negative 0.6. Again, 2 is here. The length of a is 2.6, so it's going to be 2 minus 2.6. So this gives me my major axis. 
So I, have, I know from vertex to vertex where this ellipse is going to land. Now the minor axis, b. I know that b squared equals 3. Therefore, b equals the square root of 3, which is approximately equal to 1.7. Now I have to do the same thing, but going in the, along the x direction, the horizontal direction. So again, this is a. OK, now to get b, I'm going to say, OK, uh, I'm going to have 2, and I'm going to add 1.7 to it. So that's going to give me 3.7. So it's going to land about here. In this direction, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to say I have 2 minus 1.7. So that's going to land here at about 0.3. And in the y direction, in the vertical direction, it's still going to be up at 2. So again, to get this, I said 2 plus 1.7. So that brought me to 3.7, 2. That's this point. This point is at 2 minus 1.7, so that's 0.3, 2. So this gives me the general shape of this ellipse, like this. So I can get a good sketch based on this equation. I took this equation and I recognized that it was an ellipse. I completed the square to get it in standard form and saw that it had a vertical major axis and that it had a center at 2, 2. I then found A to determine where the vertices would be and then B to determine the width of the ellipse here and then I could get a good sketch. That concludes the session of educator.com on ellipses. Thanks for visiting.